In today's video, we're going to be taking a big look at the tropics where things are actually kind of waking up here in the later portion of the hurricane season. We have Tropical Storm Sean. We have another medium risk now tropical disturbance that we need to go over. And then we're going to dive into the upcoming pattern where we do have plenty of snowfall out west where we continue to see things move in a more wintry direction. More coastal storms on the way for the east coast, so a lot of activity there and a lot of random areas in the lower 48 are going to be experiencing some pretty consistent storminess so we're going to be diving into that cooler times ahead pretty persistent obviously if you've watched any of our videos over the past couple of weeks that has been the main topic and that looks to continue through the end of October so we're going to be talking about all of these things before we really really dive into things be sure to check out prestige weather in the description and pinned comment down below it's only five bucks a month and we do early access to all of our monthly and seasonal outlooks. We also do weekly consulting calls and other consulting services within our exclusive community. Be sure to check it out today. Anyway, let's dive into things. As you can see, Tropical Storm Sean. We're going to ignore that for a minute because we will dive into that cone forecast. For now, though, we do see this disturbance here, which only has a 10% chance of development over the next two days. It's really as you dive into the seven-day forecast where things get interesting, we now have a 40% chance of development. So this one is continuing to increase in probability. We will be watching this one really, really closely. And actually, I think it's more of something to watch than even Tropical Storm Sean is. We'll talk about that right now, actually. So as we take a look at that cone forecast for Sean, you can see this one is expected to downgrade from Tropical Storm down to Tropical Depression by 8 p.m. tomorrow on Friday. Remain that way for a couple of days until about Saturday, Sunday timeframe where it will be a post-tropical cyclone. And it is at this point expected to die out over the weekend. So we do not expect any impacts really from this one, but I mean, Anything is possible, and we don't want to completely disregard it, but chances are diminishing. Let's dive into the upcoming pattern. As you can see, ongoing right now, we actually have very heavy snowfall over the Rockies. Skiing conditions look great out there for states like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. Very early season major storm as a 990 millibar low pressure center. Clearly, we can see the warm front there. It is going to develop a cold front underneath, and this will bring about our next cold air mass. Now, as we see, this storm here is also moving offshore. So that southeast storm we've been talking about for about a week will end up coming to an end as well. Let's just move this forward uh, towards tomorrow afternoon. And we can see that this low is going to really, really weaken down to a thousand millibars. So it's dropped by or it's increased by 10 millibars, which is a weakening. Uh, we do see warmer air starting to invade the east as this warm front is really Kind of at the forefront of all of this, we can see cold air diving southward uh, behind all of this. So we see that taking place there just like that. Let's keep going. And as you can see, by the time we're reaching Saturday on October 14th, this will be 1,001 millibar here. And it's all frozen up now. But we can still see that there is a pretty decent storm system there impacting areas like the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, and even portions of the Southeast as this is kind of just continuing uh, to bring impacts in a more light to moderate way, nothing crazy at this point, but it will, uh, and I would say the most major impact at this point is that it will bring about colder air. So we're probably seeing warmer temperatures still for the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic by this point, but cold air is diving in right behind it, and that will be the most major thing that this storm brings about after the Rocky Mountain snowstorm, because it is quite major right now. By Sunday the 15th, we're left with a much quieter and much cooler pattern as the jet stream is doing something like this. Uh, we can see showers moving along this colder air that's diving in. So that will bring dreary weather. Uh, really, it's going to be cloudy, dreary, cold. That is going to be the theme there for Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Monday is going to be a little bit nicer, still cool. Um, but we see a little bit less of that dreary weather. But still, it is around. And I mean, the jet stream at this point, look at how intense there. Uh, really, really seeing a prominent diving southward motion with this cooler air. Warm air surging in the west, so this is certainly a very extreme uh, arching ridge with that kind of bowing trough right to the east of it. So this is a more extreme example of a trough and ridge pattern. Let's move this towards Tuesday, and as you can see, a little bit of a coastal storm. we got to see where this one trends, because if it ends up closer to the coast, we could see more impacts. If it's further from the coast, we could see none. 
Uh, but there is some big question marks there. Still, by this point, I mean, the jet stream, it's troughing a little bit in the West, but still we have this massive ridge over the central states, and we're seeing something like this, so still very unseasonably cold in the East as a whole, and we see this surging warmth through a lot of the plains and the central states as a whole. By the time we're reaching Wednesday, on the 18th here, we could see, again, the showery, dreary weather here for a lot of the plains and upper Midwest as a result of this 1001 low, which, again, is on the weaker side of things, but still uh, it is bringing impacts, and it does have a little bit of a cold front, warm front dynamic here where we see the warm air surging to the east of it and cold air diving in right behind it, so that is important to note as well. By the time I reach Thursday here on the 19th, you can tell, we can really see that cold front there, see that warm front here, so we will see another surging warm pattern in the east with cold air moving in right behind it so something like this potential thunderstorms all along that cold front as there's warmer air mixing with colder air you take a look at that type of impact oftentimes by the time reaching the 21st here which will be a saturday uh, we could see this really deep diving trough it's a sharp one too in this example so we see something like this with the cold air pouring in uh, and then this warmth is really, really bowing out again, just like we saw a couple of days before this. So back and forth, we keep going with this persistent trough in the east, ridge in the west pattern. Uh, and then at the end of the model run, look at this. We start to get some golf energy kind of intruding in on this jet stream. So the jet stream is doing something like this. The golf moisture wants to ride along that, and this will create some coastal episodes of heavier rainfall. And if we see a pattern like that set up, expect above normal precipitation and potentially some more major nor'easters along the east coast. Total precipitation here, uh, we do see quite a bit along the northwest still, as there's still a couple of storm systems expected to move through. Uh, we do get this bit of a above average precipitation area as we see a couple lows move through here. And outside of that, the only area I'd pinpoint is the eastern seaboard with that last minute gulf moisture pattern that sets up along the jet stream. That does allow for some above normal precipitation overall to uh, ensue over the eastern seaboard. Total snowfall here, which we're going to start to take a look at daily starting as of yesterday, uh, we can see that there is multiple inches and even multiple feet of snowfall expected across a lot of the Rockies here. States like California, or better yet, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and even into South Dakota, Nebraska, and some of those higher elevation areas. We're taking a look at anywhere from one to two feet in those pinks and even into the blues especially. That's where you're taking a look at closer to two feet. So certainly starting to see those heavier Rocky Mountain snowfall events pick up now, and there's no turning back. It's going to be a common occurrence within a month. As we take a look at the temperature pattern, we see this surge of warmth in the east lasting into Saturday morning. Really, we see the coldest temperatures move in by the time we're taking a look at Sunday. This is when we will have this strong positive PNA pattern that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And this forces the cold air downward in the east here. And this is what we've talked about for months and months and months. So I'm sure there's so many of you that have heard me say this a million times, but it couldn't be more important because it completely dictates the pattern. So I love to educate people as there is always new viewers around. Monday's the same story. Tuesday's the same story. Wednesday's the same story, but we see this progressive uh, warm front with probably a cold front underneath right here. So the low is somewhere in there, somewhere in this circle here, I would say at least. Uh, and what we're seeing is this warmth is going to start to surge into the east, especially as we take a look at Thursday there. But look at the cold coming in behind it already. The PNA out west again stays strong. It never goes negative. So this is going to continue to force this to be a progressive cold moving in right behind the warmth type of pattern in the east. So we may see warm ups, but there will always be a cool down right behind it. As long as this warm air mass in the western areas of North America continues to do this. Uh, so we see that cool down moving in. But I will say at the end of the model run, we do see this spreading eastward. So this is a sign of potentially a warmer pattern ahead. This is at the 21st of October, so we'll only be able to wait and see really. The long range temperature pattern insists that there will be colder temperatures, but right around that 19th through 24th time frame, we do see the cold become a little less dramatic in the east. That could be a sign of a brief warm up or maybe a little bit more of a prolonged warm up compared to what we've seen. As we keep going, we see that we do move towards a colder pattern overall. Even we start to see the northwest get cold, which could uh, be a prediction of something more like this with cold moving in from the western areas of Canada into the eastern areas of north of, of the United States. 
uh, and that would create probably more potent cold than even what we've been seeing, and that would be for the later portion of November. So there's a whole lot to pay attention to. We're going to be tracking it with you guys, so be sure to stay tuned as we do upload every single day. So be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.